What's up guys, Aeronius here with another Raid Shadow Legends video. Today's video I'm going to be going over the Oella Fusion, and then I'm also going to be going over the missions currently and where I'm at with the missions on my road to Ramantu on this free-to-play account. So let's get into it. All right, y'all. So first off, I do want to go over the Oella Fusion with you. Where am I at? And just to make sure you guys pull Oella, I think we have like a day and a half left. Yeah, two days left, actually. So we have two days to pull this Fusion Champion. And look at here right now. I've got five, four of the epics. I wish we could just go here and just click, 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 and it automatically adds the epics into there for you. Uh, it's kind of annoying that to click here, then click here. I know it's a small quality of life change, but it would just make it so much easier, honestly. Anyways, we do have enough silver. We've got ourselves a new fusion. Oella, here we go. We've got Oella. I'm actually super pumped about this. I mean, I might as well be excited because this is the only legendary champion that I got. Uh, if you guys didn't watch my last video, I pulled 90 ancient shards and I got zilch. Okay, I didn't get one legendary I actually ended up pulling five more ancient shards during that get get one get another lego for free of course and i still didn't get anything so 95 shards in total i ended up pulling and i got nothing i should have just saved my shards for the 2x still pretty irritated about that to be honest with you but hey it is what it is so we got ourselves a new champion oella she is mine i kind of want to read her kit again really quickly so she's got Attack one enemy. Okay, decrease speed. 80% books out to 100%. On the A2, heals all allies by 30% of their max HP. Increase the duration of all buffs by one turn. That's actually a really strong ability. Fills the turn meter of all allies by 30%. Also, places a 50% increased resistance buff on all allies for two turns. That's nice. Whenever an ally loses 15% or more of their max HP from a single hit, places a continuous heal buff on that ally for one turn, places a continuous heal buff for two turns on that ally, and then instantly activate it if Ultiana the Shell is on the same team. Can occur only once to an ally per turn. Okay, so that's not too bad. 75 resistance in dungeons is pretty amazing. Uh, she's going to be a very powerful champion, I, in my opinion, for Iron Twins for me so I can beat the final couple of stages of Iron Twins. Let me go ahead now and go into missions. So missions, where am I at? So we've got Faction Wars mission, defeat stage 21 of the High Elf Crypt. It says clear it, which you've already cleared it. So why the heck do we have to go and fight these again, Plarium? Why, why are these not retroactive? That's so annoying. I had to wait five or six days for this to open. Super, super annoying. And then beat the Doom Tower boss on the 40th floor, so I can do that. And then we get stuck again for like another, I don't know, like a week or so. I mean, I guess it depends on what I'm doing for an event where I'm going to go really hard at it. If it's a Dungeon Divers event, obviously I'm going to just do spiders or whatever. So that's going to be easy. If it is a champion training event, also fairly easy. I can get like 9,000, hmm, yeah, 9,000 to 10,000 points, but it's going to take about three days or four days to do that. And then after this, we've got craft 25 weapons at the forge using weapon charms. That's easy. That's already done. Hallowed Halls. See, this one also says clear stage seven of Hallowed Halls. But the, the, the word I'm kind of looking at here calling out is the clear stage. Okay. So a clear stage, clear stage. Like, why is this retroactive? And this one's not retroactive. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. After that, we've got use 200 silver keys in Doom Tower. That's going to be another one where it's going to take you at least, I don't know, three to seven days to complete. Super annoying. Of course, defeat Dark Elf Crypt, which it probably won't be open by the time I get there. So these are just kind of holding you up. Um, the hardest one, though, for me is going to be Reach Gold 1 in Tag Team Arena. And right now, I'm trying my best to get back into Tag Team. I'm currently sitting in Silver 2. I just put in a different defense. We're going to climb, hopefully. Now, I was... The reason why I'm in the red right now is because I had one-man defense teams running right there. But, uh, well, I changed them out, and now they're not running. But I should be able to hold steady in this Silver 2 and be able to reach up to Silver 3 again. And then I'll focus on getting Silver 3 to Silver 4 as I get closer to the Gold 1 tag team mission. Because I want to make sure I can get it as quickly as possible, of course. 
And then that way we're going to get Ramantu soon enough. That's going to be pretty fantastic for the account. It will definitely progress my account for, I mean, definitely dungeons and things like that. But mainly it's going to be for Arena. I'm going to be using Ramantu to focus on helping farm to Platinum eventually. That's like another big goal of mine is to get to Platinum on this free-to-play account, which I'm sure I will eventually get there. And of course, I can also use Ramantu to push up into Gold 2, Gold 3, Gold 4 as well. There's other champions that I would really like to have that are meta champions, which would seriously skyrocket my or advance me in my quest to Gold 4 Tag Team Arena. Um, those champions are like, if I just take a look here really quickly, we've got Staltus. He's really good. Harima is very, very good. Who's on the Shadowkin. And then we have, who else could I use? Oh, more to Macabre. More to Macabre would be fantastic. And then of course, Baron. Can't forget that guy. And then Taras Marichka, pretty insane. I've only pulled one Void Legendary. So, you know, that kind of sucks. But of course, we're free to play. So we don't get that lucky, I guess. I don't have any Ancient Shards. For this upcoming weekend which really stinks but uh two ancient shards right now i'm hoping to get like 10 ancient shards by this weekend and maybe we can get a legendary who knows i doubt it but you never know all right so i do have to go into the faction crypt here and complete stage 21 this is my team currently and i might as well just do a super raid for it i'll just let it run on full auto should run through no big deal now i love this team I did have, before I got Lana Tharo, the fusion. Um, who did I have? Oh, I had a second Apothecary. So I had two Apothecaries running, and I think the time to beat it was like six minutes before. And since I put in Lana Tharo, the time has gone down by a couple of minutes, which is really, really nice. So I think it was like three minutes and 40 seconds or something like that was my fastest time. And it ranges from three minutes and 40 seconds to around... I'd say five or six minutes and it's mainly because of this wave right here if that man eater gets a turn then he places the unkillable which then it would take longer for me to get everyone dead because stupid unkillable buff you know and then of course you have uh Tyrell who depletes turn meter um so that's also annoying especially if someone has an unkillable buff on them i haven't faced stage 21 in a little while on high elves I usually only do it if I'm doing CVC because you get 2,000 points compared to stage 20. You're literally getting double the points for CVC. Ah, the fears. That doesn't help us at all. All right, so I'm going to come back to you once this is done. All right, so we're back here, and it looks like I'm about to get my new fastest time on the account. So this is pretty cool. Three minutes and one second is the time to beat it on stage 21 of High Elves with the team that I have here, Arbiter free to play from the missions. And then Apothecary, rare champion, he's OP. He's basically an epic. Uh, honestly, some say that he could be even a legendary type champion, just in a rare skin. Lanatharl, fantastic fragment summoning champion. He has that uh, ally attack with everybody and increase uh, crit damage on all allies with it, which is fantastic. And then of course you got Rowanus. He's got the stuns, which is beautiful. If the stun doesn't land, then he decreases the turn meter of that enemy by 50%. And then we've got Tyrell, old but gold. Tyrell does some decent damage. He actually ended up getting third place in damage. Lana Tharl had the most damage though out of everybody. But yeah, you know, this team actually rocks it here. So I would highly suggest pretty much everybody's probably going to be utilizing an Arbiter. But Arbiter, Apothecary, and Tyrell are phenomenal. Double Apothecary, if you're free to play and or low spend and you're struggling on this High Elf Stage 21, you could do Triple Apothecary if you wanted. The Apothecaries only need to be rank 5, level 50. They don't need to be rank 6, level 60. I happen to have a rank 6, level 60 and a rank 5, level 50 on my account prior. But uh, anyways, let me go ahead and uh, complete that mission there. All right, so this is pretty cool. So we got another Ancient Shard with 50 gems. Now we have to worry about beating the Doom Tower boss on the 40th floor on hard. Let me go ahead and scroll all the way down. I've beaten all the rotation of Doom Tower already on hard. So my account has no problems at this point. So here's my team right now. I think we'll do pretty good. I think I full auto this team. No problem. Let's see what happens here. Got my Sir Nick. He can do some damage. He's going to help us with the shields. But the biggest issue against the Eternal Dragon is he ends up uh, putting your skills on cooldown. So you do want to make sure your support champions are built with high resistance or you need to just go pure damage. 
Uh, Geomancer is definitely super OP against this boss. HP burn and weaken on the boss when he does damage to us. The boss does a lot of damage to us and in turn inflicts a lot of damage to himself from that sort of uh, pseudo reflect damage from Geomancer's passive. So that's pretty cool. And then Jareg, I love Jareg amazing epic champion he is top tier super underrated not a lot of people talk about him but he's phenomenal um he's gonna be a super good progression based champion i also utilized him for a very long time in clan boss because of that ally protection and plus his passive where he places continuous heals on his allies if they receive more than 25 percent damage from the boss and you saw that Geomancer did get a continuous heal placed on himself from Jareg, which is pretty phenomenal. Or maybe he didn't. I could be wrong. But either way, uh, we're still going well here. It's a pretty smooth fight. You have to get the HP burns on the enemies. Pretty much if you get an HP burn on all the enemies, then he's just going to see a ton of ticks on the on the HP bar there. So I do highly suggest utilizing Sill of the Drakes. I highly suggest using Drekstar. He is a free-to-play champion that you can get from the bazaar. And then, you know, Sil the Drake's just a login champion. And uh, Sir Nicholas, obviously, that's just for protection in case we were to die. Uh, unfortunately, our Geo did die, but luckily we have Sil there to pick him back up. No problem. And then Drekstar, he just takes hits and places the HP burns. That's kind of where all the damage is coming from here. Keep in mind that the boss can heal himself whenever he eats one of his side minions so that's one annoying part about this boss uh the other thing that's op about geomancer is when he places that decreased accuracy on the boss it really helps you to be able to reduce the amount of uh, resistance you need on your team so you don't get your cooldowns placed on all of your active skills i'm gonna come back to you guys now when we're about to finish this battle all right we are back we got a new best time on floor 40 3 minutes and 20 seconds with this same team. And like I said, all the damage does come from Drekstar. He got 1.7 million damage. And then of course, Sir Nick is in second place because of the Brimstone. The Brimstone is ridiculously powerful still against those bosses. The only downfall is that they reduced and nerfed the Brimstone that you have to have accuracy now for your champions to land their ability. So we're back to the missions now. And I do get 20 of these charms for attack charms. Meh. 250k that's okay though and now we're stuck on earn 25,000 points in events so for events that are open right now we do have champ training let's see and uh yeah i've already gone well over the points earned i didn't realize you can actually get more points after that it's a good thing that they do that so it actually works towards my benefit and not uh it's not going to harm us at all because i thought for a second that if it was 9,000 out of 9,000, you just don't get any more points earned at all. Uh, and then therefore, you wouldn't have those points correspond to the mission at hand. So we ended up completing this fully. We got the Epic Tome. We got the five-star Chaos or Legendary, which is nice. Oh, you know what I can do is actually upgrade a champion. So what I'll do is go into my tavern here. And I think I can get a rank five to a rank six here. But who do I want to upgrade? You know what? I am kind of focusing on secret rooms right now. So with the secret rooms, hmm. Maybe I could do Crypt King Grawl. He's actually really good in spiders. And he would be good in a secret room for support. So I think I'm going to upgrade him. And then pretty soon I can upgrade another one. So we're going to do some solo builds with Crypt King Grawl. Uh, he's actually exceptional in spiders. So let's go ahead and send him. And how many should get max? Well, we get to level 53. That's fine. So for the banner, I definitely need more speed. I wouldn't mind more accuracy either. All right, so we did get one speed roll and double HP roll here. So we'll take this one right here. All right, so his total stats currently 44,000 HP, 2,800 defense, 222 speed. Uh, 333 accuracy, which should be good for most Doom Tower content in the game. And then I have, you know, there's room for growth. So there's an HP percent percent boot on there. But to be honest, I might end up changing that out to get uh, speed boot instead, potentially. I do have an accuracy chest plate with speed on it. Defense on the gauntlet. So these are all five star pieces as well, I'm noticing. 
So I kind of want to change his gear at some point and start upgrading him to all six star gear. So I definitely have to upgrade him for sure. And then I also have to complete his mastery. So that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you watching this far. Consider subscribing to the channel and I'll see you on a video soon. Peace.